Hello and uh, welcome to Trains in Viatic and another Saturday video and more work on the roadway system. Today I'll be showing you the control system for, for our roadway system and I think that that's about it so now for the titles. <laughs> So if you haven't seen uh, the roadway system so far, there should be a card up there just now to so you can catch up with it. In the first episode, I unboxed the fellow car system. Last week, I showed you the roadway system. And today, we're going to be looking at the control system. There are several bits to it. There's one, two, three, four, five, six different components to this system. So we're going to have a look at each bit and say what it does. So I'm going to pause the camera and then I'll bring the first piece out. You might have seen this box here being sitting here for the last while. This is a brain sulfur system. It's called for VPEB, that's a manufacturer, and then it's a UCCI slash E dash U. And this is for brains of a system. So I'll just quickly disconnect it from everything. So on the back we have a USB port and an old-fashioned comms port. These are for controlling the system and communicating with it. I'm going to be using for USB. You'll need Java installed on your system to actually run it. Then you've got power which I believe both of them are I get mine from a barrel jack and then you've got the that this is for system communication port it's a three twisted uh, three pair of uh, wires and this connect to the other devices then on the top you've got some lights and a jumper then on the back you have this port here, which is uh, for loops. This is where about the signals are transmitted, and these are for uh, block detection. This use uh, read switches, and in a moment I'll show you how they're connected. So this. Uh, I bought from DTC Trains Automation uh, and just to correct myself from last week I used the wrong name for the company but this is a brains for the car system. It put out a radio signal which the cars pick up and this gives you the ability to have 40 metres of a car system. The car system was developed for uh, if I remember correctly, for Rotterdam Model Railway uh, thing. I can't remember all the details, but it's on their website. So, uh, this is a brain of the system. So, let's go on to the next part. So, this is for OC32NG. You've got two versions of this. One which is non-DCC ready, the other one is DCC ready. On this you've got a set of uh, dip switches. You then have communication ports for further communication with other boards. Then you have a three pin connection which connect to the blue for master system. Then you have a power. I'm not sure what power it's meant to have. I need to double check that. Then you have additional upgrades you can do on this. And then you have the uh, outputs, which are these here. There's 32 controlled outputs. And as well as a standard on off things, you can control relays with a special board. 
and other things so this one i can only control from this unit but you can get dcc version but you need a programmer to program it or you go and uh, get it pre-programmed and again this is from where's my note it's from vpeb and this is one of the major parts of a system this is the equivalent of an accessory decoder but it just has 32 outputs and you can daisy chain them together so if i do that you can see the brains of the system the clock quite a few pins for setting things then you can get additional boards to clip on here to do additional things and if you have a DCC version, you have that taking out that part. So uh, that's that bit. So let's go on to the next part. The next part of a system is wire. There's two different types I'll be using. You've got the first flat cable, which is used for the block detection. And then you have a standard wire, which acts as the radio system so this would be installed on for road so if I get a piece of road out so you would have uh, your magnetic strip running down the middle for your car to run along so if we put a magnetic strip down there And if I took the backing off, that would just stick in there nicely. And then you would have your radio signal wire coming down the sides. So you would have this like that, and then the wire returning on that side. So this is what all the grooves are about. Then you just put your finishing material on top. So this is what's actually sending out the radio signal and it needs to be a certain distance from each other. All of this is laid out in the manual. You can access the manual online and the website should be appearing just here. So this is giving us the basic control of the system. So let's go on to the next part. The next part is what's actually going to the vehicles and it's uh, these chips. I got three of them, I just opened one case up and the chips have this coil just here which is used for uh, picking up the radio signal. There's instructions on the website of how to uh, set it up but again this needs to be a certain distance from the um, from the road so that it can pick up the radio signal then you've got the chip here which have a lot of tiny whiny connection uh, points so this is what gives you the control over your lights your indicators, your motor, battery power and everything. To try to make my life easier, but I don't expect it to, I'm expecting it to make my life harder. I picked up these bits so that I can have short wires running from the decoder to the uh, perf board and then that will make soldering everything easier but it does give you a lot of control when it's finished. It's actually quite an amazing system. Uh, so this one run on radio signals. There's also another manufacturer which does a system which run on infrared. So you just cover your layout on infrared. But I'm using this system. So let's go on to the next part. Uh, these are about £45 each. So you need to take this into consideration with your uh, vehicles. But 
this is what makes the system so much more advanced than the basic fella system. These are what's used for block detection, feeding it back to the controller. I showed you the uh, wire a few seconds ago. They just plug into these as a continuous uh, line and then you have address things to move along. This is using a multi multiplexing system, so um, that means that you have a few wires doing several jobs. So when two wires cross over, that make a connection. So these get fed with, uh, these go to read switches, which I just happen to have just here. And uh, that then, um, when the circuit is made with a read switch, it go and activate whichever circuit it is, which then feed back into the command center. So that's what's uh, allowing it to have its dete uh, detection. So this is quite an important part of the system, as you need to know where everything is on the layout. If you don't know where it is, you're going to have major problems and these boards go in will solve quite a lot of problems. So you've got diodes inside, you've got the connector and then you've got the header pins. And on the back, you can see that it's actually quite a simple setup. So we'll now move on to the next part. Uh, I forgot to say the name of the last part. That was... Uh, uh, it was uh, di di Diamond SP04R and this is a MCC Diamond SW uh, deck. So this have four header pins there which are correct for servos and you have four several connections there. So you have your uh, switch your ground and your volt so that sits connection so this connect into your let me check the name of it OC32 and then you connect your servos onto this and this gives you the ability to control your um servos from the car system so let's go on to the next part so these are the servos so you've got the actual servo in here which then mounts into this here and turns this here which you then have the magnetic wire on so that you can change the direction of the vehicles so that will sit on top of that like so and then you have your roadway just around that so when you send the turn command, this will turn slightly so that instead of going that way, it will go that way. And it's quite a nice little system. Um, the parts, this part here is 3D printed. A lot of uh, accessories for this is 3D printed. And it's a nice little set of parts. I got four of these for all my turns. Also, it's uh, four boards which give you your uh, servo controls. I do need to get some servo extension leads, but that's on one of my shopping lists for Ali Pally. So let's go back to me and we can have a bit more of a chat. So a few bits with what I've just shown you. With the servos, you need to install that underneath the uh, board. Where about your servos, at, at your road race actually going. So it wouldn't go underneath like that. So I need to drill a few holes on for MDF. Uh, because of the thickness of MDF I'm using, I'm also going to have to put a hole for the servo mechanism 
and then just rebate some holes so that the mechanism is the correct height. Uh, so that's going to go down there and then we're going to have it up for bus stop. Um, so that's that bit. I will show you uh, installing for chips into the vehicles. So there's the white van and one of the DHL lorries. They're going to be for the first two to be installed. And then I'm going to see if I can convert a third vehicle into something different for the layout. So that's that. Um, I haven't got much else done for the layout since I last saw you. But uh, we're about to go into the show season. So we got Base Stoke Show next week and Ellie Pally the week afterwards. I can't remember what time we're filming for Wednesday, but uh, I'm going through my bots of uh, projects still waiting to be done and actually trying to show you what's on there. So we're going to start to clear boxes free. And I'm starting to look at long term projects to do. I'm looking at installing Raspberry Pi boards, which I don't have one here, uh, into the layouts as I want to put down there a second control centre which is repeating what's on for e course. I want to put a camera in for what will be for tunnels so that I can see what's going on. As uh, so I've got points and bits, so I don't want to have derailments. I got two uh, point decoders I need to reprogram, actually change, and then reprogram for complete um, numbering system. <coughs> Excuse me. Use for so that when I use the DCC concept uh, alpha memory panels. I'll be able to uh, use it for the way that it's designed as they work on a linear system where about I've done a non-linear system with numbering for points. Another project coming up when I get the parts order is going to be for mini uh, panels. I'm looking at having two panels, one for the hidden fiddling yard and one for the uh, running line. So they'll be put on the wall over there. Again, I'm looking at laser cutting them at uni, then put them in a nice frame and put them on the wall up there. But we're coming into the show season. So I got, so I'm going to be working, I'm going to be do, filming a lot of shows. But I'm going to have a layout running session in a few weeks time after Ellie Pelly show, I believe. Well, but we can see how things are starting to look as we'll have a roadway system there and we'll have some other nice bits done. That's something else I need to do just over there. Where about I have got the shops, I need to unscrew them and move them back as a space behind them. But um, that's that needs to be moved back so I can then finish off that retaining wall over there but I have a nice long list of projects and then we got our garden railway that we're going to be doing a lot of work on again this year uh, so thank you for watching make sure to like subscribe and comment and I hope you're liking the new thumbnails I have introduced so thank you for watching, make sure to like, subscribe, comment and I'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you very much, Richard.